Welcome to the FNO InsureTech Podcast, a place where movers and shakers from all points within the insurance ecosystem gather and discuss all things InsureTech. We talk about how technology and innovation are affecting and driving change in the industry. Here are your hosts, Lee Boyd and Rob Beller. Hey, podcast world. For the life of me, welcome <laughs> to FNO InsureTech. That was good. Your, <laughs> huh? Did you like that? I did. For the life of me. For the life of me. Uh-huh. Lee, do you own life insurance? Yeah, yes. Yes. My no, dad was an you. agent for a long time. <laughs> So I have lots of life insurance policies. Uh huh. I own a life insurance policy. That's good. You know, I, I read a book just the other day, and it was it was really into why to get life insurance and how much life insurance and what type of life insurance. And it was a it was a very good book. You know, and not all what? life insurance is for everybody. Certain life insurance may fit your time of life better than others. So. When you compared what they were prescribing compared to what you have, how did you do? I did okay. I did mm-hmm. okay. I didn't always agree with it. Just because they wrote it doesn't mean it's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and doesn't mean I'm right. But uh, I felt okay with what I had. I feel like I have a good, uh, you know, a good mixture of policies. So you have more than one. I do. I do. So if you were a marketer of mm-hmm. life insurance you might you might want to get in touch with Lee Boyd. <laughs> that is true. If only I mm-hmm. knew someone who sold life insurance. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, you do. Oh, do I? Uh huh. You just met him. In fact, I did. I did. It was a because we record meeting. this after we record the actual interview. Yeah. So yeah, you were trying to fool everybody, but I turned you in. But what I about this? Back the Rob? curtain. What yeah. about this? What Tell about me. if there was a life insurance? out there, a way to buy life insurance that could reward you for the healthy things. Not, not always at, you know, the, the negative side, but looking at the positive side, the positive things you do to better your life, uh, to, to make it longer. What if there is a company out there like that? Well, this is what I have to say to that. Okay. Insurance is all data. I like that. Was that original? That was original by our guest today, who's going to answer your question and back up that phrase, insurance is all data. That's Asaf Henkin, the COO and co-founder of Sprout Insurance. Yeah, he is really amazing. Uh, Today, we're going to get to talk to him and it's a, it's going to be a great conversation. We're going to get to talk about him and about life insurance and about what Sprout is doing. But this guy is really fascinating. And I encourage you to, to look him up if you haven't. He is a serial entrepreneur and has had some great success. And he's not done. I mean, he is doing some amazing things in the life insurance space. And uh, I'm excited to, to share this interview with everybody. Yeah, this is an example of one of the groups of founders who came into insurance without an insurance background, but in a very thoughtful way, yeah. in a very deliberate way, and um, uh, influenced by people who knew them and knew what they were capable of as as a management team. And they have uh, gone about it again. They've created a new company. They have had success. They've attracted investment from um, very established life insurance companies who are very interested in what they're doing. And uh, just an exciting example of what's gone on in InsurTech and how this whole new wave of people and energy and thinking and asking questions, why does it have to be this way? Yeah. Just because you've always done it that way. Why can't we change it? And Sprout is a great example. We're going to look at data that comes from the kind of attributes that we want you to have, not the kind of attributes that we don't want you to have. Right. And and so uh, I think you'll find this uh, to be a very interesting and exciting episode. Here's our interview with the... COO and co-founder of Sprout Insurance, Asaf Henkin. 
Hey, everybody. Welcome to our interview with our special guest, Asaf Henkin, who is the co-founder and CEO at Sprout Insurance. This is another foray for us into the life insurance space. Thanks for joining us, Asaf. It's nice to have you with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great to be here. Where do we find you today? I am uh, in uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. Typically, I split my time between uh, Tel Aviv and, uh, and the U.S. We have an office in New York, and we have an office in Kansas City. So pre-COVID, I used to spend, yeah, almost half and half sort of split. And since COVID, I'm grounded. <laughs> now I have my two vaccines in and I have my green passports. I'm planning a trip probably in a few weeks. And I'm excited to get back on the road and back to uh, the U.S. to see our team and meet a few partners and all that good stuff. What's a green passport? They give you here, after you get the two vaccines and you wait, I think it's two or three weeks, you get, it's not really a green passport. It's like this thing you download, but essentially it's a permit where now I can get into everywhere here in, in Israel. And for travel, I think they now have treaties with certain countries that when you land and you show it, you know, you're not going to go into quarantine. And That's cool do all the checks and all that. That's awesome. That's cool. We really need that in the U.S., but that's another topic for another time. (laughs) Yeah. So you didn't surprise me when you said you're in Israel and you're in New York, but Kansas City kind of caught me off guard. What's with that? We started our company about three years ago, a little bit more than three years ago. And the first year and a half, we were very focused on building the technology and the foundation for uh, a lot of the things we do today. And then we launched our direct-to-consumer offering uh, on Sprout.com. And we were about, let's say, six, maybe eight months in, and we realized that we needed to grow the team to support incoming customers, both from a customer service perspective, but also to have licensed insurance advisors for people that need assistance and advice and um, to close and and buy the the policy. And we were in New York. We had an office in New York and scaling the team there was not that easy. A few people told us to look into Omaha, St. Louis, Kansas City. And, you know, we started to look. And I think the good thing in, in that area, we landed in Kansas City and we're very happy for that. And so the advantages as we see it is, first of all, you know, center uh, in terms of time zone, there is a very uh, relatively high amount of uh, licensed uh, insurance advisors, life insurance advisors. So we were able to build a team very rapidly. Today in Kansas City, we have about 30 people and we continue to grow. And the team is awesome, super nice people. And yeah, so we're happy with the, with the Kansas City office and it looks like we're going to continue to grow there. That's wonderful. Awesome. Let's start by talking about Sprout and telling mm-hmm. our audience what is Sprout, what you guys do and, and how you do it. So I'll go to the very beginning and share a little bit you know, even before Sprout, about myself and the team. So we founded Sprout, Yoav, Itai, and myself. So Yoav is the CEO, Itai is the CTO, and myself. And as founders, we've been together for about 20 years now. So this is the third startup that we're doing together. And our previous startup was acquired in 2014 by Singtel, which is a Singaporean telecom company. Post that acquisition, we spent about three years with uh, Singtel. And, you know, each one we had different purviews and uh, it was nice, but we left a year before our earnout expired because it was a little bit too much for us uh, being part of a 50,000 employee uh, company. What we did uh, at our previous company that was called Contero, we built a big data platform that analyzed massive amounts of data 
that consumers generated from their online behavior, from their digital interactions on web, social, mobile. And we offered a platform for marketers and planners, strategists. And when we left there and thought, you know, we're still too young to not do anything, you know, what's the what, what, what's going to be the next thing we do? We were approached by investors that wanted to invest in us as a team, even before we knew exactly what we we're going to do. And and one of the things that came up was uh, insurance, and uh, and we're like, what insurance? Really? You know, it was sounded very strange to us, very far. Uh-huh. But you know, we said it's interesting. We started to look into it, and it turned out that it was very appealing to us because insurance is, there, you know, there, there's no real product; it's all data. And coming from a, from a data world, it was very interesting for us. We we started to do some initial research, and pretty quickly we gravitated towards life and health insurance because in life and health, the analysis that you do regarding individuals really goes into the the product itself, the underwriting, the pricing, and also the acquisition of those people. So you know, and that's what we knew how to do from our previous uh, company so we, you know we got into life insurance because we thought that what we know how to do can really add impact in this in this world and i think uh, in hindsight it, it, it you know it turned out to be true our approach to life insurance is that uh, looking at tr- the traditional way of doing life insurance it dawned on us that the traditional uh, companies, the the incumbents, if you will, are way too focused on uh, understanding what's not so great about individuals. So if you're uh, overweight or if you smoke or if your family history in terms of medical conditions is not so great. And for every such thing that they discover about you, they penalize you by either increasing the rate or limiting your coverage. Mm-hmm. And you know, and we said, why is it? And I guess you know we're a bit naive and new to the industry. And like you know, why why is it that you can only you know it can only get worse? It can get better. Right. Uh-huh. And yeah. you know, and, and and if you think about it, uh, in in car insurance, you have today you know models where if you drive safer, if you drive less, you'll get benefits for that. And you know, with life and health insurance, not so much. We couldn't find too many modern approaches to that. So Sprout really was born to uh, create an opportunity for people that take care of their lives, that try to live better. And using data and uh, and technology, we, we detect that, we analyze that, and we want to reward people that live a better lifestyle, that are aware of living a better lifestyle with a product that, first of all, is is easier for you to buy, completely online, fast, quick, convenient, and also the product itself, in terms of its coverage, in terms of its uh, riders, price, etc., will reward you. And in order to do that, we created what we call the Quality of Life Index. The Quality of Life Index is our way of, of assessing individuals by using uh, lifestyle data. So how active are you? How well do you sleep? Um, you know, how do you live your life? And we do that by assessing that via um, a, a questionnaire that is uh, personalized and has thousands of different questions. And when you go through it, it adapts to how you're answering it. And also by enabling you to connect a wearable device. It can be uh, today we integrate it, we're integrated with Garmin and we're adding more. Uh, down the line, we see ourselves connecting with almost anything that you would want to use. And um, by doing that, our you know our approach and I think what sets us to, to be different from uh, from uh, other players in the market is if you really are trying to live uh, a better life and, and you're taking care of yourself. We will make sure that the way that you buy the product, the product that you buy, the product itself, gives you an advantage. And, um, you know, that's really what Sprout is about. We're just getting started. So we're just, uh, you know, in terms of our evolution as a company, we have a very 
interesting, exciting roadmap ahead of us in terms of how do we do it better at, at greater scale, adding more products. But the opportunity is massive, and we're super excited about it. I have so many questions to ask you. When you came into the life insurance space, and it sounds like you were your your team was kind of introduced to it. It wasn't uh, something that you came to serendipitously or for some other reason, but but uh, yeah. um, uh, some other group said, hey, we want you all to look at this. When you first started looking at it, tell us what that experience was like. You must have been scratching yeah. your heads saying, what the <laughs> heck? What's going yeah. on here? Yeah, no, so we, we formed the, the company and we were a team of about 10. Uh, us three founders and the rest were the data scientists and developers that were with us in our previous startup. And we, we set the team to build the, a data platform based on what we thought could be useful for a few applications. We didn't know quite you know where we're going to go to, but we knew that it's going to use consumer data. And that's what we started to build. And while we were doing that, we, we started to meet companies. So we, we, Went to London, we went to New York, we traveled to um, Chicago, uh, LA, the West Coast. And we just met with, you know, anywhere from uh, Hiscox to uh, Aviva in, in London to um, companies in the US, uh, Guardian Life, uh, John Hancock, uh, et cetera, New York Life. And the experience was that we almost every meeting when we started to talk with these folks, the second, you know, they introduced us to their problems and, and Hey, can you help us solve this? Can you help us with that? And all of the problems were very intrinsic. All the problems that they surfaced in these conversations were enterprise software or it type problems of, Hey, can you help us, you know, process claims faster? Can you help us detect, um, who's you know being truthful or honest? Who's a real smoker? Who's not? Can you help you know? And and it seemed like most of these problems were within a certain um, guardrails that they created. And we you know we scratched our heads and we said, yeah, we could probably do that, and we can probably help you with with that problem, but it's not really interesting enough. And you know even some of these conversations even led to you know, some of these companies wanted to buy our team at that point to acquire our team just, you know, for the sake of us helping them uh, build some solutions. But yeah. as I said, it, you know, it wasn't challenging enough. And, and I think only after six months or so, we realized that, you know, we're either going to work with these companies and, and help build solutions that solve internal insurance company problems, or we'll have to take a step back and build something that will be in parallel to what is happening today. But that's really sort of the two options, I think, that we found when we first came into this industry. You're either going to be, you know, building solutions for the, the carriers or, or, you know, the, the, the existing players, or you'll have to come from the outside and build something new. I want to go back to what you were saying about rewarding people for their for their quality mm -hmm. of life. So basically, yeah. are you looking at a person rating them based on on generic information and then they can get improvements in their rates or improvements on on benefits? How, what does that quality of life equal there? We are working with reinsurance companies that uh, provide the you know, the reinsurance uh, capacity and we work with them with their underwriting systems and underwriting practices. And then we have a, a carrier partner for a specific product that we file and, and then we sell it. Okay. When we say rewarding the customer, it comes down to two main areas without getting too much, you know, too deep into the weeds here, but it's mainly two areas. One is the, the customer journey itself. And the second is the underwriting and, and, and the pricing of the product. And the rewarding part in these two areas is, first of all, when the consumer starts the process of buying the product, we're able, using the quality of life process, 
in conjunction with additional data that could be your basic uh, demographic data, but it could also be uh, prescription drug data, for example, or credit data. But if, when we take all of that in combination, so we take our quality of life data and combine that with other sources of data, we're able to predict pretty early in the process the likelihood of that customer to qualify for a certain product. And, and that enables us to reward this customer with the right process. And that might seem you know, simple and, and obvious, but in life insurance, that is big because most uh, purchase experiences today are very generic. A person will come in and they will get their first quote and then they'll go to the application and you know they might be denied or they might you know by the end of it see a price that is double from what they saw and that's all because it's very generic there's no personalization there's no real data engineering what we do in the experience portion is to reward you with something that because we're able to predict how you're going to end up with the process we know how to route you to a product that's really the right product for you what is the right coverage amount what is the right sort of rate range that that uh, will be uh, applicable for you. So that's the first way to reward people with the right experience. The second thing is a bit more complex, and that's more in the underwriting uh, area, where we say that, you know, in life insurance underwriting, you have, you know, the preferred, preferred plus, or, or, right. or super preferred, right. uh, standard, you know, you have your underwriting classes. Now, in reality, if you think about it, it's very rigid. It's it's a very rigid process uh, mechanism that uh, the industry created. All of us fall within, um, you know, within different uh, let's call it different ends of the spectrum when it comes to this underwriting approach. And what we do is using our own additional data layer with the quality of life data, we're able to say, you know what, you came out as preferred on the traditional uh, underwriting, based on the traditional underwriting classification. But when we add our perspective, when we add our quality of life data, you can really qualify for preferred plus or maybe somewhere in between there. Now, there's no way to do it in the traditional world. So what we are doing working with reinsurance companies is we're creating these new underwriting classes that are sort of in between or we're able to upgrade, if you will. And what that does is we become more competitive because we're able to offer you a better rate. And that means that you'll, you know, you'll be more likely to go with our offer. We, cr- we provide you a product that is higher value for you. And that means that churn lapse will be lower. And we're able to, based on you know, giving you the right product to keep you a, a happy, satisfied customer that might you know, buy additional products from us down the line. So those are the two areas where we reward customers. First is with the experience and the buying journey itself. And the second is with the underwriting and the value that you get when buying the product. You said something that I just, I had to write down. I I was so taken by it. Insurance is all data, Mm -hmm. which I think is a really terrific perspective. Not a surprising one, but I love that you, you know, fit it into four words like that. Obviously, the data when it comes to life, well, any insurance, but life in particular, that's what we're talking about here. Data Mm -hmm. is so important. And I mean, I'm sure you can understand why things have been done traditionally the way that they have been. If Mm -hmm. your cholesterol is such a number, then there's data out there that supports you need to be careful. You need to watch out if you're an Mm -hmm. underwriter. Right. How do you get around that? I mean, it. One of the things that when I when I go on your website, it's like mm-hmm. it's it's kind of a very positive approach, right? Not right. just don't you love your family and want to take care of your family, mm-hmm. which is a more traditional approach. Your approach is, hey, are you getting enough sleep? Right. right? How do you bring all that together? Because we believe that life insurance is a great product. It's a it's a really you know it's an important product. But it shouldn't be thought of as something that I just do get over with to, you know, God forbid something happens, you know, my family will be taken uh, care of. Obviously, technically, that's what it is. But 
we want to we want to think about it that it's something that is part of your life and the healthier you will be the better customer you'll be and it's a win win right the the healthier you are the better life you're going to live you're going to enjoy your life and we will have a, a longer living and a better living customer now what you say about cholesterol and all the traditional data points is is true and and we use that but Think about all the new data points that uh, came into existence in just maybe the last 20 years, right? There's research out there that shows that people that walk X amount of steps per day, per week, are going to live, you know, three to five years more. There's data out there that proves that people that sleep a certain amount of hours or a certain sleep quality will tend to live better, will be more relaxed, will, you know, therefore have you know a less stressful life, less accidents, et cetera. There's even data out there that correlates the fact if you have a pet, if you have a dog, and, and your mortality risk. Now, all of this is out there. It's been you know proven at, at very high scale. And the industry is now starting to be much more open to it. And what we're saying is, let's use this data. Let's not throw away the traditional data. Let's continue to use cholesterol and Rx data and all that, but let's add another dimension to it. And this additional dimension is this quality of life index that we developed. And it's it helps you better assess an individual. So when you do something in addition to the existing model, we're not throwing anything away. We're just augmenting it. We're complementing it. And what we're seeing from reinsurance companies is a great openness to it. They actually want to use additional data because I think everyone understands that that's, you know, the, the way of the future. It's more about, okay, technically, how do we do it? How do we map these new data attributes? How do we pipe it in, quote unquote, into systems? How do we make sure that when we capture the data, it's clean, it's accurate, et cetera. Um, but that, you know, that's how we see it. It's not an either or, it's, it's complementary. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think it makes total sense. So whenever you're capturing data, let's say from a smart device, like a Garmin, um, you, you know, I'm, I'm huge on tracking everything that I do. I think for maybe 10 years, I've tracked every step I've ever walked with one of my watches. Uh, yeah. What are you capturing? What are you inputting in into your APIs to, to actually start this process? Is it, is it just steps? Is it heart rate? Uh, how deep do you actually go? First of all, it's important to understand that it's completely optional. So people can buy insurance with us without connecting their device. And, um, you know, there's a portion of people that tell us, yeah, they want to connect and they, and they do and it's great. But, you know, there will always be a portion that uh, choose not to and it's fine. Or maybe they don't even have a device, even though we see that the proliferation of these devices continues to grow. What we track or what we what you share with us is up to you. And uh, you can control it. You can uh, disconnect. You can, you know, it's totally up to you. And what, so we were able to capture everything or, or just a few uh, elements of data. Uh, in practicality, the strongest data signal is activity. So it's steps um, or your type of activity, depending on, on the device. There are devices that will differentiate between, um, you know, walking, running, et cetera. Um, that's pretty much, uh, you know, the dominant um, data input. And then <clears throat> there are additional uh, attributes such as heart rate, et cetera, that we capture, but we're not yet, you know, using it to, a, to, a, to the extent that we're using activity. So physical activity is definitely the, uh, the leading indicator, so to speak, currently. Is Sprout live now? Can somebody go on and purchase a life insurance policy now? Yeah, yeah, of course. We have uh, thousands of happy customers. The platform is 24-7. You can go on and buy um, a policy. People that qualify can purchase a, a life insurance policy in 10, 12 minutes, uh, completely online, real time. People that don't qualify or, you know, they might have questions and want to speak with an advisor, we have our staff readily available, not 24-7, but, all, you know, every day and, and obviously business hours and, and sometimes late at night. So, yeah, definitely. 
platform is live, we're selling. And how are you driving traffic there? You said that you have a staff of advisors, mm-hmm. licensed uh, life insurance advisors, mm-hmm. because obviously when it comes to life insurance, there's lots of questions. In yeah. fact, Lee and I found that when we have life insurance people on, we have a lot of questions to ask. Um, <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a complex product. It's a complex product, and it's an but like you said, an important one that people want to make sure that it's there and that it functions properly. God forbid that it has to. So, how do you drive traffic to your website, or mm-hmm. are you selling through agents? And to talk about your distribution. So distribution is definitely an important aspect of, of the insurance business that you guys probably know much better than I do. <laughs> we, so we're fortunate enough when we started the company and, and the way that we started it and created the brand about uh, living a healthier life and being aware to all these aspects of the quality of life index, we have a built-in content angle uh, to begin with. And if you'll go to our website and, and visit our blog, it's it's almost like a magazine. And that is something that we've invested from day one, even before we started selling, you know, our first policy. And we've had we've been fortunate to have a lot of uh, guest writers and and writers that we've partnered with uh, on a long term basis now. Much of our content has been featured on on sites, uh, both in terms of financial services sites and, and um, healthy living sites or, or just uh, lifestyle, family lifestyle sites. So a good portion of our incoming traffic is driven by, by this type of content and by people that read and, and uh, interact with content about us and click and visit our website and start start the journey that way. We also have a few hundreds of partners uh, in the online ecosystem. Some are websites, some are mobile apps, some have both a site and an app. And again, these are not typically your, you know, the traditional life insurance sales, although we have those as well, but many of them are what what you'd call affinity sites. So sites that talk about tangent topics, but uh, we're able to introduce the idea of life insurance um, on, on, you know, in those context uh, spots and in that content. So these partners are partners that we pay a, pr- a percentage of, um, of the business that sure. we generate or we have different types of relationship with. And uh, recently, we also started to work with brokers, agencies and agents that are interested in in our product and they are interested in what we're what we're able to offer and then that's another very interesting and very scalable uh, route for us when they are you know offering our product to their customers um, so that's what we do today as i said earlier you know we're just getting started we're just you know a few thousand first customers and i think down the line we'll be partnering with uh, more brokerage uh, firms, maybe even insurance carriers. You know, we have a few investors that are insurance carriers that want to do more with us. So, you know, distribution is definitely something that we're uh, continuously innovating with. You know, one of the topics of the day, of course, Mm -hmm. is COVID. Mm -hmm. Like we saw in the United States that COVID actually had a not surprisingly, a negative effect on lifespan, Mm -hmm. you know, in the last year, it decreased in the United States. And so obviously death, that event Mm -hmm. is a very important part of your business. What about COVID and life insurance? What can you tell us about that and how it might have affected your business or what, what do you guys do on that? Yeah, no, that's a very interesting and, uh, you know, I've been asked about this (laughs) obviously for the last year. So it's interesting. We obviously we were all surprised by this, you know, global phenomena when when it all happened. In the first months we saw a spike. I think it was about 25, 30, maybe even higher than that of just interest in in life insurance and we saw a lot of search traffic and uh, and just, you know, higher demand. To, to an extent where our sales with some of our partners w- were sort of 
halted or, or, or not going as fast as we wanted because much of the sort of the, the fulfillment food chain could not keep up with that pace. So I think that was something that we saw March, April, uh, May, you know, when, when COVID just started. I think then it's sort of, I think summer things got a, a little bit slower. And now I don't even know how to divide it because I think it's sort of baked into, you know, our, our growth and the numbers that we're seeing. So that's just, you know, to, to give you a sense of what we saw when, when it all started. What Another aspect of it is just how people, as you said, sort of, you know, death and, and, and this, this, you know, threat to, to families uh, became, I think, real. And we see what people are asking. And a lot of people are asking, you know, can I get life insurance or, or is, there, is it more difficult now? Do I have to get a COVID test to get life insurance? So there are a lot of additional questions, of, and people are curious during the, the buying process. Companies, you know, our partners, the reinsurance companies that we work with and the carriers that we work with, um, you know, it, it's relatively a, a slow business. So there weren't too many changes in terms of pricing or in terms of limitations. There were a few companies that after a few months did put some limitations in or, or they capped a few um, a few options in terms of the products, but not too much. And and now when we're about you know a year plus in, questions about COVID are standard part of the process, part of the underwriting process. So there is a set of questions that we ask, uh, and it's mandatory now. And if someone says that they did have COVID, then there is a set of additional questions that we need to ask. So I think that's sort of how COVID affected the world. And I think we're going to end up, you know, in a few months where the COVID questions are going to be traditional life insurance buying questions, just like, you know, HIV or other conditions. And that's just going to be the, the norm. Sure. Let's talk for a minute in, in the little bit of time that we have left about emerging technologies, trends, uh, predictions for the future mm-hmm. of insurance. You're, you're, you're in a unique seat because you and your founding team aren't, uh, to use a term that we use, insurance people. You didn't come, it's not a legacy thing that you've been in insurance for, you know, forever. Like Lee, Lee and I, have, we're, we're insurance guys. We've been in insurance forever. You're right. new to the industry, which I find to be very exciting because you bring fresh perspectives and you ask questions that people who have been in the industry for a long time never ask. Right. So if you could talk for a minute about trends, predictions for the future, mm-hmm. emerging technologies, we'd, we'd like to hear your perspective. Sure, sure. I think we've been fortunate to have one of our earlier investors in, in Guardian Life. And Guardian Life is is a you know it's a traditional company. I, they've been around for I think 250 years. Don't quote me on that, but probably somewhere in that area. You know, massive company, but they want to innovate. And their relatively new CEO Andrew McMahon um, comes from a background of innovation, and he was um, early on very interested in what we do, and and that sort of led to the investment and. I think when you ask that question, I'm thinking about them and and just, you know, comparing what we do with what they do. Yeah, it's not going to be the same because they have a a legacy and a a massive company and existing distribution channels to take care of. But you can slowly, sorry, see how their way of doing business um, is becoming more open and impacted by companies such as, as Sprout and what we do. So that's the first thing that I think is a trend where you'll see more and more companies are being more open and actually doing things that, you know, not just talking about it, but really doing it. The second thing is, I think COVID uh, was a big um, change agent, if you will, for uh, digitization. And I think companies realize that, you know, consumers are really going to insist on buying insurance online. And if it was sort of a nice to have and, you know, and, and people were saying, yeah, but, you know, insurance is different. Life insurance is different. You need to, you know, speak with an agent, maybe even meet with them. I think COVID sort of put a mirror to everyone's face and said, look, you know, 
People want to buy online, they're going to insist on it. And if you can sell it to them online, they're going to move on and look for, for other options. So I think that's another trend that's going to solidify in the next few years. What we see is just companies will have to adapt how they um, do some of the most basic things. And, and I'll give you an example. When we're <clears throat> developing a new product, the underwriting process um, is something that we're innovating, right? You, the traditional way is that someone fills an application. It goes to the underwriting team. There is a real person, an underwriter, that reviews it and has questions and this and that. All of this now needs to go into a real-time process where people come in online. There are reflexive questions that people are getting, you know, are asked. And then there's an instant decision, a real-time decision based on data. That's how we sell a product today. That's how everyone will want to buy life insurance in the future. Now, when you go through that, the questions themselves, you know, that's it's something so simple, but but our experience has been that it, it's it's hard to get people around. The questions are just not phrased, not formatted, not phrased in the right way for a digital online experience because the questions in a, in a paper form or or you know what what an what um an agent or an underwriter will go through with a person um in in a face-to-face -face meeting it's just not the right way to do things online and that's very basic but we're seeing you know it's not the easiest thing to change because it's being you know these questions have been filed with the states and once you file them it's very hard to change so that's just another sort of simple example, basic example of something that will need to change the the fluidity and and pace of updating such small things as questions in an application. Isn't life kind of a crowded space? Aren't there lots of and lots and lots and lots of life insurance companies? I think it depends to um, what you compare it to. If you're looking at incumbent companies, existing companies, if you're looking at more sort of innovator startups, there's definitely options. And I think um, if you count companies in North America, I think the number is anywhere between 500 to 600 life insurance carriers, small, medium to large. Um, and then you have uh, you know a lot of, distribution type companies. So um, aggregators, comparison sites, uh, different types of agencies, brokers, etc. Uh, you know, on one end, you might say it's crowded because there are a lot of different options. On the other hand, I would say it's a massive market. When you look at the, you know, the size of the market, if you look at number of policies being sold, premium coverage, etc. It's a massive market. And when you look at the number of companies that are still operating in the same mode of operation. So when we look at the market and how many real competitors are out there in terms of who's going to serve the modern customer, the number starts to, uh, you know, to become much, much smaller. Because um, when you look at the modern consumer that would want to buy life insurance, let's say five years from now, it's a different type of buying experience. It's a different type of preference for that consumer. And when you look at the number of companies that are going to play in that market, the number is dramatically smaller, right? The number is dramatically um, decreased from you know the 600 or so companies that I mentioned earlier. And that's really the competition that we see. And it's on us to, to lead the way in that respect. And we believe that based on the foundation that we created and that we continue to, to develop, we're going to have something very unique because the product itself, the insurance product itself that we'll have to offer is going to be something very unique for people that um, are really, you know, as I said, take care of their life. And the experience of buying that product is going to be something. Unique. So when you put those two, two, two things together, I think that um, it's going to be a market where we're able to lead, we're able to set the tone, to to dominate. Doesn't mean that you know we won't have competitors. Uh, we'll of definitely course. have competitors, but you know it's it's not going to be as crowded. And I think it's on us to to lead the way 
in that regard. That's really exciting. Last question is, you know, you're in insurance now. You've came from entirely different industries. You like insurance? What do you think? Are you happy here? Yeah, it's fascinating. And you know what I like about it, first of all? When our, our previous companies, we were in digital marketing. You know, Google and Facebook are, are massive today. But think about digital marketing. It didn't exist uh, 30, 40 years ago. So we were in a, in a challenging spot of, you know, you need to prove that there's a market and how big is it going to be and all those questions. Insurance, there's no question, right? It's It's massive. It's uh, it, it's very you know established, so that's I think fascinating for us. But then, when you think about okay, so how is it going to change, and and how much does it need to change? I think that's what makes it really interesting. And uh, and and as I said earlier, when we just started this conversation, insurance is really just data, right? There's no thing you can't feel it, you can't uh, hold it in your hands. It's data when it comes to um, the actuarial aspect, the underwriting. Uh, It's data when it comes to acquisition. And that gives us a lot of room to maneuver and a lot of flexibility. And we love it. We love it that, you know, it's this type of product. And uh, we love it that it's it's a positive product. It's a product that really protects people, that really provides value when, uh, you know, the worst thing happens. So it's a good place to be, and there's a lot more to innovate. And we think that we're going to lead that innovation, and we're looking forward to collaborating and working with different uh, people and companies in the industry. Well, we're thrilled to hear about your guys' unique take on a a very established and slow slow to change world, the life insurance world, but obviously you guys have attacked it head on in creative and clever ways. And and uh, we'll look forward to having you on again and hearing more about Sprout in the future. I would love that. We can, Next time we can have, I'll tell you what, Lee and I will go to Tel Aviv mm-hmm. and you can come to the States and, and okay. do it here. So we'll, we'll switch places. I like what do you think, Lee? You I think to, that's a great idea. You want to go to Tel Aviv, Lee? There's Google imaging Tel Aviv and it's very beautiful. Yeah, Tel Aviv is a great city. It's a great, you know, point in terms of ocean and weather and uh, exciting nightlife and yeah, there's a lot going on in Israel itself. is a yeah. great place to visit. So, I would love to have you visit, but I'll tell you what, when you come here, I'd rather be here, take you around, show you I love spots. that. I like and, that. That's a great uh, yeah. idea. And then Let's we do can that. switch. Okay. Thanks Asaf. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Talk soon. Thank you so much Asaf. I think that life insurance is so interesting. It touches such interesting points in my head, right? Yeah. I think it I think it's really interesting. I love what they're doing. I think that life insurance for so long has always been the same uh that you know, the same if you're if you're healthy, if you're on the weight and height chart, all these things. But I love how people like us off are saying, "No, no, no. There's a different way." There are other ways to look and, and grade people, and and it doesn't always have to be bad. What if they do all these good things? And I love his spin on it. Of hey, if you if you work out, if you go get the steps, if you go take care of yourself, get enough sleep. I mean, we can reward you. I I love that. I think it's needed. Yeah, I mean, it's different than like property insurance as an example. I mean, you you can have people who their entire life that they own property insurance and pay for property insurance, it's entirely possible. They might never have a single claim yeah. that gets paid, right? right? But not life insurance, right? You're betting that people live and they don't die. Yeah. And the science behind that, because of course, it's all based on science and- Yeah, it's all stats. Yeah. And data is just, <clears throat> it's amazing. Because- because insurance is data, right? Insurance is all data. That's okay. our new that's that our new tag line. phrase. Great yeah. line. Great yeah. line. Thank you, Asaf. We, we appreciate you giving us that line. Thank you, Asaf. We're your big Asaf Henkin fans, big Sprout Insurance fans. And we thank uh, the people at Sprouts and Asaf for giving us some time today, late at night in Tel Aviv. 
Right, coming 10.30 to us, his time. Late night Tel Aviv. Maybe that's the name of our next podcast. Late night Tel Aviv. What do you think well, about that? I think it would be wonderful. Okay, and we, maybe, now we have it, and now we have we an invitation to go there. Yeah, on site. Uh, absolutely, that's happening. We thank you all for being with us, and ask you to come back next time for the next episode of FNL Insure Tech. And until then, we'll say goodbye, everybody. <laughs>